are the muscles involved in coordinating your pressy to breathy spectrum? How does it work from a functional standpoint? Welcome back to another episode of our anatomy and function series where we're going over all the individual aspects of the vocal instruments so that you can be teaching with confidence knowing that you know your stuff. Today we're talking about your adductor muscles, the muscles that bring the vocal folds together, and your abductor muscles, the muscles that bring the vocal folds apart. This is a bird's eye view of the intrinsic muscles of the larynx in a neutral position. So we're just breathing. When we go to bring the vocal folds together, there are two big muscle groups that help to make that happen. The first is the lateral cricoarytenoid muscles, or the LCAs for short. I have a lovely little mnemonic device that I use for LCAs to help me remember, let the cords adduct. As they engage, they turn these little cartilages towards the center, bringing together the front portion of the vocal folds. The next thing that happens are the inner arytenoids engage, bringing together the back portion of the vocal folds. Do you see the difference? When these two sets of muscles are engaged in combination with the thyroarytenoid muscle or the bicep of the vocal folds, we get some really firm closure, what you might call pressy sounds. Now the posterior cricoarytenoids or the PCAs help to pull those vocal folds apart. Now the big misunderstanding is these are not the muscles that give you that breathy phonation sound because as you can see, the vocal folds aren't even touching, which means they can't create any kind of phonation. When they engage, they help to anchor the arytenoids when the vocal folds are stretched. Otherwise, those arytenoid cartilages on the back that are helping to secure the vocal folds would just go <clears throat> There's also been some research to suggest that they might help with quick unvoiced sounds like p, t, k, s, those kinds of things. So how exactly do we create breathier phonation? By developing degrees of engagement of the adductor muscles so that they're not always like, a hundred percent, but you've got 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, so on and so forth. That's why it's so important that we spend time in the gradient work of our vocal fold closure to help refine the engagement patterns of these intrinsic muscles. I want to be clear, learning to refine that process is not going to be effective if we're saying, do this to these muscles. You cannot tell a muscle what to do. You can only give it something to do. The something to do could be as simple as sound targets. This could look like, repeat after me, ah, uh, ah. Uh, 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 whatever you want. Our mirror neurons in our brain are so strong that we really can depend on call and response that much. If you're enjoying this very nerdy anatomical voice content, be sure to like and follow. Happy teaching.